Hello and welcome to another video about the Mantis Q40. Today we're going to look at a couple of features that you might want to take advantage of or know how to turn on or off and configure. The first thing is that the Mantis, though it is a full QWERTY keyboard, can also be used as a six key entry keyboard. I'm going to show you how that works. So if you place your fingers on the home row with your left hand on F, D, and S, and your right hand on J, K, and L. The F and the J both have slight bumps on them, just as usual. And the F key is going to be your dot one. Your J key is going to be your dot four. And your other fingers will align as appropriate. So F, D, and S are dots one, two, three. J, K, and L are dots four, five, and six. The spacebar also continues to function as a spacebar as well. You don't have to use this method, obviously. So if you want to switch between the six key entry method I just described and using this as a standard QWERTY keyboard, you're going to want to press the F12. To find the F12 quickly, if you go to the upper right corner of the display, or of the, um, excuse me, of the keyboard, you will find the uh, delete key. If you move one key to your left, and it's marked with a very small bump along the bottom, that is the F12 key. So that will turn the QWERTY, um, QWERTY and six key functioning, um, we'll toggle between the two of those. So if you realize that you're trying to type something and it doesn't quite seem to be taking, it doesn't quite seem to be, uh, it beeps at you sometimes, that, that might be why, so try that. Try um, pressing that F12 key and see if that works. Now let's take a look at Braille profiles. When you got your Mantis Q40, you probably noticed that when you turned it on and went through the menus, if you have done so yet, that the menus are in uncontracted Braille. That was the first thing that drove me nuts. I'm not a big fan of um, reading that when I'm trying to, to do something, and I found it a little annoying. So I thought it might be the first thing that maybe we looked at together was how to modify or add a Braille profile. The term Braille profile really sounds kind of intimidating, but it really isn't all that intimidating once you understand how to add it and what they are. So a Braille profile is a profile that can be used to access your uh, display. So it's like, what grade of Braille are you using? Which translation tables are you using? Uh, which translation table, I guess more for, which translation table do you want for each option? So you'll, you'll understand what I mean when we go through that. So to find that, you're in the main menu and you're gonna press S for settings and activate that with either a cursor routing key or by pressing um, an enter key. You'll see user settings here first and you're going to just press the thumb key once or you can press the letter B for braille. And now we see braille profile. So I'm going to go ahead and open that within either an enter or a cursor routing key. The first thing I see is the active profile. And that active, prof active profile is called contracted Braille. Or it's actually, it's called um, contracted UEB. My apologies. So, and here we are, that's the active profile. I can tell because it's got that dot seven and eight underlining it. So if I press the next thumb key, I'm going to see add a profile, add Braille profile or add profile. And then the next key I'm gonna see is, or the next option is cancel. So I have my default profile, which I have created for myself. Yours will probably say default. And then we have the options to create a new one or to cancel and get out of here. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to create a new Braille profile. So I'm gonna to go to add and press my cursor routing key to enter that. The first thing you're going to see is it wants you to give your profile a name. And I'm gonna just call it test. There we go. And in order to accept that, I can either press a cursor routing key or an enter, either one. So the first question it's gonna ask you is your Braille grade. What grade of Braille do you want to be uh, the default in, in this Braille profile? So 
they're the active one anyway. So we have some choices. Right now it says contracted braille. If I wanted to change that, I could. I could press and enter and that would allow me to edit. So it's going to give me some options here. The first one is um, contracted braille. If I hit the next thumb key to cycle through my choices, the next option is actually gonna be close. But the following option is going to be uh, computer braille, followed by the next option, which is going to be uncontracted braille, which again is followed by contracted braille. I'm going to cycle back to uncontracted braille using my previous thumb key. That's the, the uh, grade that I want in this profile. So I'm going to go ahead and press a cursor routed key and enter or, or enter actually to select that. And now my display says Braille profile or Braille grade uncontracted. So great. So now I want to go to the next option by pressing my next thumb key. Now we have computer Braille table and it's going to ask you which Braille table you want. When, when the first setting that we just left, if that were set to computer Braille, what table would you like computer Braille to use? If I hit a cursor router key or an enter, either one, I would be able to select that um, computer braille table. Right now, I have it selected as English um, and uh, it looks like Lib Louie. I could change that if I wanted. I could scoot forward. Oop, next one, Espanol. All right. Uh, I could do that if I wanted, I could, you know, they have the different Spanish ones and then they have Farsi. Oh, really? Okay. Well, lots of different ones, I guess. So I don't want to get too lost and I just want to keep it on English. I don't want to make any change. And if I'm not sure where English is, I can just press escape. Okay. And here I am where it says computer braille, um, uh, computer Braille Table English. Great, that's what I want. So now I'm done adjusting for the Computer Braille Table. If I hit the next thumb key, I'm going to find the uncontracted Braille Table. What table do I want if that first option we would have seen would have said uncontracted Braille, which it did. So this is the one we have in focus because that was what we picked. So I wanna know what the translation table is going to be. So let's see, uncontracted table. Let's see what it is. Right now it has, um, it has uh, English, UEB. So let me think. If I wanted to change it, I would go ahead and press and enter or a cursor router. And again, it's going to give me some choices. It's gonna start with what I do have which is of course English. Um, if I choose to um, move forward, it'll you know change to another one. This one says um, English um, Duxbury one. Okay, so all sorts of different ones you can pick. Now I, I don't wanna mess with perfection here. So I'm going to press escape because I don't want to mess with it. I, I know that this is what I want. And that's okay, because that's probably what you'll find too, is that the, the uh, default choice, the default choice that's already there is what you want, and that's fine. So now if we press, we're done with contracted braille tables, we press that next thumb key, it's going to bring up contracted braille tables. So again, if I wanted to change that, I could press a cursor routing key, and see my choices, one of which is English, UEB, Duxbury, grade two. I just want to keep it where it is. I don't wanna change it. So again, if I'm going to actually, in this case, I'm gonna cycle back to where it says English UEB, which is right here, and I'm going to press a cursor routing key. Now I'm back where the contracted Braille table options are, and I'm going to go ahead and go past that. And here we have save. So I'm going to go ahead and press a cursor routing key to save this, and it says save. Okay, so now let's go through my options. Now I have the contracted 
um, UEB, which is still my default Braille table that's, that's PIP, the one that we had from before. But look at this. Now I have a test shown up. So that is the one that we just created. If I want to make that default, I could hit that cursor routing key or I could hit an enter and that would make that the default. And then I would go ahead and get out of there. Now you'll notice your, yep, because I picked that, that braille table, that braille grade, it says doggone it, it's right back in uncontracted braille. But I can fix that, I can go into braille profiles. So now we have contracted UEB. I want to select that one, so enter. And here now it's underlined again. All right, let's go find that test one right here. And it's not underlined. Now, if I want to make changes to that, or if I want to just get rid of it, I can. So to open the context menu, I'm going to use a control plus the letter M. And I'm going to get some options here. The first option says delete. Uh, delete Braille profile. The next option is configure Braille profile. I can go through the whole configuration again if I want, if I just don't want to start over, or I can delete. Those are my two choices. I'm choosing to delete it. So I'm going to press enter on delete, and it's going to ask me if I am sure, confirm delete. So I need to press um, a next thumb key so that OK is on our display, hit my cursor routing key, and the profile is deleted. So and if I continue to go through my profile, I don't see the one that says test anymore when I go through my profile list. Now, you can't delete a profile that if it's the only one there, you, there's a safety, you can't delete that. So there's no worry about that. I don't know if you can delete a profile when it's currently the profile that is selected or in focus. Um, if you can, then it would probably pick another profile uh, to be your default. But my guess is that it wouldn't let you delete it until you chose another profile to be the profile that was the one in focus. And then you could turn around and, and delete the profile you wanted to get rid of. I hope this is helpful for you. Uh, I know it might have sounded kind of confusing, but it's really pretty straightforward. And if you need assistance, of course, they have a nice outline in the user guide. I hope this was helpful and we will see you next time.